I would like to watch this. It is an hour long. So you better bring your snackies. I've got snackies here. My chocolate stars. Cup of tea. Right, okay. Ready guys? Are you ready? Are you are you are you? How much do you want to bet that he's wearing the exact same outfit? The Hearthstone t-shirt and the pajama bottom. Well, hello there. Oh, different. It seems like people. It's a different t shirt, guys! <laughs> nice! People really enjoy it when I talk about things covered in deep layers of copium. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think we're riding on copium that much. So far, I have not made up a single thing, I am simply presenting things that already exist. And as my videos got traction, I started getting some valuable feedback. So before we begin mm -hmm. today's video, let's have a look at some of the things you just had to point out. Wow. For those of you who believe we are starting <laughs> unhealthy hype, it's fine. As long as we all understand that we are... Do you watch Necrit's videos? People get no way. People get excited, but we don't have to confirm or deny anything when when. Are dealing with hypotheticals and that we will all be I get it. by the time it comes out. I also got to interview the person who wrote the upcoming massive League of Legends novel. Oh! To now be working on the MMO. Oh! That... Oh! Wow, 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 wow. The amazing Ant Reynolds, also on the MMO team, also had a little thing drop recently. Ruination book. Oh my goodness! Her family, her fate? Has anyone read this? Or has it not come out yet? Yes, my videos are being passed among the developers. So you can stop tagging them on Twitter now. Also, that novel is insanely good. It's Game of Thrones in League of Legends. Oh, I am wow! I for the potential lore of the MMO. And when blah 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 And Reynolds is leading narrative for the MMO. One of the things great about this world is its breadth. So while there are grim and tragic stories, spoiler, this is one. <gasps> I spoiled it! Other stories are heroic, happy, even silly breasts. <laughs> Next, um, yeah, I am wearing my slippers out of my own volition. Yes, uh, shamans can shapeshift in this universe, just like druids. And yes, Riot confirmed that Legends of Runeterra, which is the card game based on League of Legends, is a big inspiration when it comes to the world building. In case you're wondering what this is about, all the art I am showing you- Oh guys, should we play that game? I've never played it before. I'm not really- I'm not super into card games, I don't- I don't really have the brain for it. ...comes from Legends of Runeterra. A game that secretly acts as a massive archive of art that reveals this universe. Anyway, after covering the world and all the races and classes the lore supports, mm -hmm. we can now dive into the potential endgame bosses of this MMO. Now I know what you're thinking. This game isn't even in the playtesting phase, how can we talk about the raids? Well, you see, that's because Riot was probably thinking ahead of time and they started a bit of a meme in the lore community. They gave this universe way too many world-ending threats. The downside of this is that, yeah, there was a time when we didn't know which world-ending threat was the real world-ending threat. Who's that? Is that was a battle between who's the biggest evil. But the benefits are obvious. You have a lot of meaningful enemies that you can remove before you start limiting your storytelling. And in fact, many oh, that was, of these big that was Kane. are written with all the back doors open, so that in the future they can utilize them for an event in League of Legends, or it is stories that were left open purposefully for the MMO. Oh, sorry, what's her, what's her story? Isn't she like super new? What's it? What's her name? Nila? Nyla? Have you guys... Have you guys played the new TFT set yet? Do you like and it? That's what this video is going to be about. 
Originally, I wanted to show you 10 storylines that were left open and which would lead into raids. You like. But if you look at the length of this video, I like it. Yeah, I cut it down to only 7. So without further ado, let's get on it. Since we are essentially oh. talking about the world of League of Legends, especially oh. if you have seen our last two MMO videos, it goes without saying that this world has material for hundreds of instances. This means that it's really up to Riot to cherry pick which ones they want to do. And since in this video I am only going to mention 7 of these, it is highly likely I am not going to mention the one that you would like to see. But if you feel strong about your own idea about a dungeon, feel free to comment about it below. This is all valuable feedback for the developers after all. Anyway, the 7 raids I picked are based on one simple fact. Their stories and setting are perfectly fit for a raid environment. Be it because their stories are set up for a grand finale, or because some of these villains already have a cast of supporting bosses <gasps> for the raid. Or simply because the battles would be really cool. And because showing is better than telling, let's start with the first raid. One with such a good setup, the raid essentially writes itself. The Ascension of Mount Targon. As you may remember, oh. Mount Targon was created by the Celestial Gods to serve as a gateway to the Celestial Realms. And people decide to climb this place for a variety of reasons. Even though only about 1 in 10,000 makes it to the peak, some people try to climb the mountain because they want to be deemed worthy and become a Celestial Demigod, while, for example, the Marcians send their criminals here to die trying to climb the mountain. Oh. This death sentence is called the Crown of Stone. And yes, of course, you can't really force the criminals to climb the mountain unless you go there with them. So most criminals just flee and start a new life elsewhere. Also, at the peak of the mountain, we can find Aurelian Soul, the Star Forger. <laughs> The reason why he is here is because of the crown he is wearing. Long story short, thousands of years ago when people noticed that Aurelian was crossing the stars, they started worshipping him which boosted Aurelian's ego. And they <laughs> crafted him a crown of celestial star metal. Aurelian, already being quite egoistic, donned the crown only to realize it was a mind-controlling device. What? In reality, it was the celestial aspects who wanted to hold Aurelian's power the entire time. <gasps> now, to be fair, the aspects are using Aurelian's powers for good cause. They are using his celestial fire to purge the void from Runeterra. But still, it is the celestial aspects who enslaved Aurelian. Anyway, Riot can make up a billion reasons Whoa. why he's the greatest. Wait, so was Aurelian like one of the most like powerful? What is the most who is the most powerful champion by law? Bard. Why Bard? You, see, you guys seem kind of divided between Bard and Kindred. K Kindred is like is Kindred death? Kindred but Bard is cooler. <laughs> Place. Maybe he'll so talk I about doubt it. We would be able to fight Aurelian soul at the very peak. You know, he is made out of space. But maybe oh. we need to reach the peak to borrow some of his powers. Or maybe we need to kill a rampant aspect. Or maybe we just need to reach the celestial realm for another reason. Simply mm -hmm. said, it is easy to make up a reason for this raid to exist. What's more interesting is the setting of this raid. At different levels, the mountain presents you with different enemies. So let's start with what would happen once you enter the raid. <gasps> it could you be so at the beautiful. Of the mountain where you are very likely to meet Chip. <gasps> Chip is an already established character who shows newcomers the wonders of the mountain. So you follow him around until oh he arrives at our first boss, the living mountain itself. This place has plenty of earth elementals who came alive due to the mountain's magic. <gasps> now, as I say this, don't confuse the earth elementals with Malphite. Malphite comes from Ishtal, which is quite far away from Targon. Also, he's a good guy, we don't want to fight him. But I didn't realize he was so big. Would likely protect this place. We have, for example, the blue sentinel who also appears in League of Legends. Uh... But the biggest of them all is the Stonebreaker. This one would be an excellent introductory boss. You know, you're fighting the mountain itself. 
And yes, I know he's a bit too big, but do you think do you think they would make um the the Baron a raid bot? Well, sorry, he he might talk. Is it the Baron? Him for gameplay purposes. WoW has been notoriously known for inconsistent boss sizes, and it's fine. Anyway, what? after Stonebreaker, we go Baron Nashor. Up the mountain, yes, and suddenly we start meeting all the lesser dragons and their worshippers. The coolest of these are the white flame dragons. There is also an important dragon who serves as a beacon to the other dragons called Inveilus Vox. But the one that could likely become a boss would be the Eclipse Dragon. That's because this dragon is quite precious to the natives on the mountain, which would be boss number three. You see, further up the mountain, we start encountering Leona. the tribes. There are the Lunari who hide in the shadows because they are being suppressed and they are relatively friendly, just like the Rakor. But the Solari are fanatics who blindly protect the celestial realms at any cost. Oh. Even in the cinematic you can see how they are protecting the gateway that is leading to the peak of the mountain. And even though it would be cool if Riot allowed us to fight Leona herself, mm. champions in League of Legends tend to wear pretty thick plot armor. So instead, it would be cool if we could fight one of Leona's champions. The one known as Daylight Spear, Ravoon. Anyway, after defeating the Solari protecting the gateway, we would get near the peak. <gasps> the first one to meet us here would be the Infinite Mind Splitter. This is a legendary draconic creature with a very unique ability. It is told that its gaze gives you so much knowledge and insight that your mind crumbles beneath it. So fighting this boss would be all about getting buffs from it, while being careful not to get too many buffs because it would kill you. And then, <gasps> after getting past the infinite mind splitter, we He's really thought about the this. last stand of the mountain, the Arbiter of the Peak. Oh. The last guardian standing in the center of the peak, separating mortals from the celestial realms. This is the creature that leads the mortals who survive the climb directly to the celestials. In fact, that's what you can see here. He is guiding Tiari the Traveler to the Celestial Realms, where they would become the Traveler. But also, in case of emergency, the Arbiter serves as a guardian against unwanted visitors. Two things could happen here. Either we fight the Arbiter to get its approval to pass into the Celestial Heavens. Oh my god. In this case, perhaps the Arbiter can test us with... This, this doesn't seem like... Like... Like a first raid thing? Right? This seems like, like the toughest stuff in the game. The lesser celestial beings. Or we simply have to destroy the Arbiter. In this case, the Arbiter would probably fight us with the golems. And finally, perhaps after beating the Arbiter, we are granted access to the celestial realms. And while again, I doubt like? we would be able to fight Aurelian soul. Perhaps we could fight one of his creations that is endangering the world. We have two of them that stand out. The first creation is simply known as the Great Beyond. Oh. Aurelian Soul himself calls it his magnum opus. This is essentially a smaller celestial <gasps> dragon created in Aurelian's image. It's beautiful. So this would be like fighting Aurelian himself, except this would make sense. The one I believe might be a bit more appreciated, however, would be the one known as the Scourge. This is also a celestial being created by Aurelian himself, but League of Legends players might recognize this one as the pure celestial version of Baron Nasher. Ah! It is believed that the physical Baron was born out of the pure image. So, ah! the Scourge being the final boss would be a really cool nod towards the League of Legends community. Yeah. See what I mean? I just made up a 7 boss raid in a heartbeat. And I skipped a lot of details just so this video wouldn't be too long. There are the Celestial hour. Beasts, <laughs> the demons trying to consume the heavens, the dragon roost near the peak where dragons are born, the star hounds, Esmus, the breath of the world, whoa, whoa, whoa. and so on. What's that? What? It looks like Bard. Born, the star hounds, Same. It looks like a like a Bard if if he was a noodle. Oh, those are oh those are the little, little like things that that follow him. I hope he talks about Bard.
us, the breath of the world, and so on. Designing this raid was simple because the lore and the setup is already there. Once again, I did not make anything up. All of this already exists in the universe. And Runeterra has a lot more places just like this one. So, let's have a look at raid number two. Raid number two! The one raid I know as a fact people would love to see is a Darkin raid. Uh... You can pull this off in a lot of different ways, but since the roots of the Darkin lore are in Shurima, the raid would most likely be oh, in the sorry. deserts. Super quickly, in case you forgot, the Shreeman Empire rose to power after it started using the Sun Disk to reflect celestial magic into their soldiers and turning them into the god warriors known as the Ascended. The Ascended were guaranteed immortality, however their minds were as fragile as they oh. were before. After these Ascended fought the maddening Void Beasts released by their neighbors, they started going up a little bit mad. But it's probably going to be the Tom Bombadil figure. Mysterious and fun that just helps out in his own way. Didn't he say there was like a little, like a little rock? Like a few minutes ago. <gasps> you know what I, he should really talk about? If in the game you can get pets, what would the pets be. The TFT pets. <gasps> the chunks. I'd really like a chunk. But their minds finally snapped when their emperor died too and there was no one to give them directions. The story goes that a Darkin known as Zolani, who used to be a great healer, invented blood magic and used it to heal the other Darkin, by which she also infused them with the blood magic. With that one's a plan to use the blood magic later to control them all. This was Zolani's secret plan to stop the rampaging Darkin. Unfortunately, the Celestials noticed that the Darkin were very dangerous, and they started sealing them inside special weapons. <gasps> the sad part is, Zolani herself was also sealed inside her blades. Oh. So since Zolani was sealed away, there was nobody to control the others. And as a nice bonus, the remaining Darkin were now empowered with blood that, magic. That one's Kane, Fortunately, though. in the end, the Celestials sealed all the remaining Darkin inside their weapons too. But stupidly enough, the Celestials let mortals to safeguard these Darkin weapons. So of course, some people were tempted to pick up the weapons and use them for their wars. At which point the Darkin immediately dominated the mind. <gasps> that the art is lovely. So yes, these. Ah, oh, it doesn't. This uh, this doesn't look like like League splash art at all. It's gorgeous. But that was League splash art. It's bad. It's, that is also gorgeous. But this is very Gold different. Gold warriors managed to free themselves. So now let's quickly go through those who would serve as big raid bosses. Perhaps the most famous one, and as far as we know, the most powerful one, yeah. is Aatrox. After Aatrox was sealed away, his blade was picked up by a random warrior in the north. Of course, Aatrox immediately dominated the warrior's body, and oh, since wow. he used blood magic <laughs> to drain the dead around him, and make himself bigger. Oh, That's what he's huge! He starts small, but gets bigger the more things he kills. In fact, it got to such a point where Aatrox became the only being to ever kill a celestial god. Oh my god. As I mentioned in the last video, Aatrox started <sighs> wielding the power oh, of the aspect me. of war so hard, the aspect of war was wiped from the stars. So out of all the Darkin, Aatrox is the ultimate end boss. Besides Aatrox, as mentioned, the second most important Darkin is Zolani. Now, Zolani has canonically not returned yet, but Legends mm. of Runeterra is teasing that she might come back in the future. Mm. Also, as a fun fact, in the most recent cinematic, you can see that Talia and Kaisa arrive in front of the faceless statue of Zolani. Oh. Next, there is also Varus, a dark inside a bow inside a well, and he got freed after two hunters fell into the well. So now, Varus' body I love this is actually cinematic. occupied by three souls, the two hunters and the Darkin. One could say he's the embodiment of two and a half men. 
And there is also Cain, the one holding the scythe of a dark inn known as Rast. But as far as we know, Cain is pretty good at resisting Rast's power. So I doubt Rast would be freed. Also, Cain is a League of Legends champion. So in order for Rast to come out, Cain would need to die. And I don't think that's uh... possible with all the plot armor. But we are still not done yet. Next, from the lesser known Darkin, there is also Horazi, who was sealed inside a small emblem, Naganeka of Zurita, who was sealed inside a giant ballista. As you can see, she looks a little bit like a chicken, and that's because it is believed that what? the chicken touched the ballista and the Darkin took over the chicken's body. And lastly, there is Tarosh, who was sealed inside a massive halberd. The reason why what? this Darkin raid would work is because all the Darkin That is, that is, that I've, that is like, this is, that is, that is such a weird design. Uh, has anyone seen the monster in The Ritual? Kind of reminds me of that. They all hate Zolani. They see her as a betrayer who was trying to control them. So in this raid, we would likely fight the other Darkin as we are trying to get to Zolani. And after we kill her, we would face Aatrox as the final boss. Since all the Darkin Wars began with Aatrox and Zolani starting a civil war. Also, it turns out that Aatrox was the general of all the other Darkin. So killing uh... Aatrox would be the perfect end to the Darkin chapter. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget that Riot is already teasing a new Darkin. The next champion in League of Legends might be a dog that picked up a Darkin dagger. What? If you're wondering why we would raid this place, first of all, the Darkin are pretty one-sided bad guys. A but dog. we could be led here by Nasus and Sivir. Nasus is an ascended who avoided corruption, so he would be likely happy to put down his former brothers and sisters. And Sivir is holding the very first blade to be ever used to seal a Darkin. So once again, the lore is already there. And aesthetically, we have a good idea of what it would look like too. We would start outside around the temples of Zolani, which look creepy and corrupted. And later we delve beneath them to where the land is tainted by blood and death. Oh. For the next raid, okay. let's stay in Shurima. Because if there is a raid, I would personally love to see it is the raid on Narimazeth, a city that is in ruins. That's because Narimazeth was the place where Shurimans tried to build the very first sun disk. This first version failed and instead of the Ascended, it was only producing the Bakai, which are broken, twisted <gasps> versions of the uh, glorious Ascended. Oh dear. And in the end, the entire city collapsed onto itself. After that, the Shurimans tried to build the sun disk again, but this time in the middle of the desert. But now, why would we want to raid these ruins? Well, that's because this city is being rebuilt by Zeroth, the oh. most powerful arcane mage on Runeterra, whose body was turned into pure arcane energy by the sun disk itself. Long oh, I, story. I don't know why, but I thought I thought Rise was the most powerful mage. Shorter. When Emperor Azir was a child, he became friends with a nameless slave. And despite slaves being forbidden from having names, he called him Zeroth. Throughout the years, the two became as close as brothers, studying culture and history whenever possible. Later on, despite his father hating him, Azir became his only surviving son. Ah. So unless his mother gave birth to another child, he would become the emperor anyway. Well, in secret, Zerath simply made sure she would not give birth to another child. Usually he did it by corrupting the infant in her womb. Because it turns out, this entire time, Zerath was trying to break his roots from slavery. And now he had the ambition to gain power himself. So he justified these murders by telling himself that he was protecting a friend. Despite his efforts, the queen did give birth to another child. So Zerath summoned a storm and let a lightning kill the queen and the child. <gasps> Eventually, all these events led to Azir becoming the crowned emperor of Shurima with Zerath by his side. From this point on, Zerath was waiting for Azir to finally get rid of slavery. Which never happened. Despite Azir being the most beloved emperor in history, 
he allowed slavery to keep going on. And that kind of weird, dude. Zera. At the end of the story, the emperor was chosen to become an ascended himself. But during the ceremony, when the sun disk was focusing its power into Azir's body, Zerath was so full of his BS, he incinerated him and forced all the power of the sun disk into himself. <laughs> this, so this resulted in Zerath's body being turned into pure arcane energy, uh... the death of Azir, and the collapse of the sun disk and the destruction of the entire empire. Damn. You wanna know the twist at the end? If you read the story from Azir's perspective, uh -huh. you learn that he did want to remove slavery. <gasps> he just wanted it to be a surprise. In fact, he even announced it just uh -oh. as Zerath <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like a surprise, like a, like a like party? I'm a surprise! There's no more slavery, guys! Trade him. But That's Zerath so weird. way too many people, so even though he really wanted to stop, <laughs> it was too late to go back. So <laughs> Zerath ruined the entire empire. And yes, because the emperor died, Zerath is also technically the reason why the Darkin exists. I already uh, mumbled about the lore for way too long, so just know this. Nasus's brother, Renekton, bound Zerath in a sarcophagus. Renekton. And he locked him Is that the crocodile? Renek. Renekton. He's an alligator, not a crocodile. I really hope there's someone in the YouTube comments who's like, actually, Zalkenth is wrong. He's a crocodile, not an alligator. Just so you guys know from YouTube, Zalkenth says he's an alligator. <laughs> Actually, I don't care if Zalkenth is right or wrong, but I, I, I'm asking you, YouTube viewers, please, can one of you just comment saying, this Zalkenth guy has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> himself with Zerath in a team. Many years later, scavengers opened the tomb and released Renekton and the <gasps> Oh my god. He is inspired by the Nile crocodile or the West African crocodile and is either represented as its form or as a human with a crocodile head! <laughs> Amazing. He's wrong. <laughs> Said Zerath is currently in Nerimazeth, and he is actually trying to rebuild the original sun. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, ready? Let's go. We're not even halfway. <laughs> we don't really know why he is doing it, but I think it's safe to assume that he just wants more power. But you know what it smells like to me? It smells like a big old setup for a future raid. In Legends mm -hmm. of Lundera, you can see Zerath with all his worshippers. You can also see all the mini-bosses around him. Especially, we know about Demi Yin, the Unbound. But besides all of these heralds and acolytes, this raid would also have the Bakai, the original oh. experimental ascended who come from this city. Oh. But also, we would fight Renekton himself. Because it turns out, after hundreds of years of being locked in a tomb with Zerath, Zerath broke his mind by whispering to him that Nasus betrayed him. He purposefully led him to rot in the darkness. <gasps> That's why Renekton is quite crazy these days. It all goes back to Zerath, who might be the ultimate villain of Shrima. Why is he a villain? Because he's mental? Because he's mean? But I thought... I thought he just wanted to end slavery. He killed chi- Oh, he killed children? And Azia's mom? I mean, but maybe he was just really mad.